So my name is Ashley Cooksey. I am a teacher librarian and instructional technology coach for the Batesville School District. Um, I began working with CodeSpark and coding with them a couple of years ago. I was introduced to CodeSpark by a co-teacher, Denise Hogan. Um, some of the ideas that we'll see in the presentation today were um, co-taught with her as the computer lab teacher and me as the librarian. We often found that introducing technology concepts were easy to start with um, a book. So we're going to look at a couple of books that we use to introduce some coding concepts and how coding can relate to early literacy. So even students that um, are not literate yet, they haven't began to read um, preschool students, even just letter recognition. A lot of coding concepts um, are things that you are already teaching. You just may not realize that. And um, they're very, very easy. I know nothing about HTML coding or any um, line coding. I learned just a couple of things to look at when I was working on our school's website, but I could not tell you the first thing about how to actually build anything from the ground up. So um, the FOOS is a great place to start, especially for younger students. And um, we do have some older students, um, third grade and up, who do enjoy um, working with CodeSpark and um, using the games on the app. I'm super excited. I got the email today about Snoopy's Snow Brawl, which is um, an hour of code activity that CodeSpark does, and it's a partnered coding activity. So if you are on Twitter or Instagram, my handles are both there to the left side of the screen. And if you have any questions, you can reach me there um, if we don't address them in the session today. Or you can always email me and my email account is down at the bottom of the screen as well. Um, so I've already introduced myself as a teacher librarian and technology coach. And I am CodeSparks Coding and Early Literacy Subject Advisor. So to introduce today, um, what is coding? Like I said, you probably have already taught some coding in your literacy classes. You just probably did not realize that. Um, so coding is the process of assigning a code to something it is expressing a meaning in a statement um, in direct ways, such as symbols, or converting symbols to a message of a particular word. And um, so that kind of, to me, that sounds familiar. It sounds a lot like the alphabet. And um, we recognize the shapes as letters. Letters have a sound. Sounds put together can make words. That's basically what coding is, taking symbols, putting them together, and making a statement. Coding actually dates back to ancient Egyptians. It's over 3,000 years old. And I bet you guys have probably sent some of these today. You probably have spoken in code and not even known it. And if anybody can tell me what the laughy cry face actually means, um, bonus points to that one. That's when I send when I'm not really sure what else to say. It's kind of like just saying, okay. Um, so a coding in early literacy can help students to build fluency by learning letters, putting that to their phonemic awareness. Letters have sounds. Sounds can make words. Words have meaning. Those words can have multiple meanings when you go into um, building sentences. So CodeSpark is actually wordless coding. So students do not have to read in order to participate um, with CodeSpark. They are actually able to code without um, being, having to read. They do offer free lesson plans on their websites. Some of the coding concepts that are on the website include sequencing, stacks and queues, conditionals, events, debugging, Boolean logic, loops, automation, variables, inequalities, and they are constantly adding new content. Today, the books that we will look at um, to introduce the coding concepts are actually going to be the top four, sequencing, stacks and queues, conditionals, and events. 
Throughout this presentation, there are some videos embedded, um, but due to time, we um, will probably skip a couple of them, but you'll have access to the slides so you can go back and watch if you're interested in seeing the videos. Actually, I'm going to go back and play this one. So this is what CodeSpark looks like when you first get onto the app. Um, you have to pick a character and then a name, which always takes forever. So this was one of my students actually on my um, phone trying to pick their character. So you can see how much fun they were having trying to um, decide what character they want to be before they actually got into playing the game. Um, the game that they were on is actually a sequencing game, which is where we start our coding. Um, sequencing is the basic to um, the very basic knowledge that you would need to code through CodeSpark. And is actually just putting um, things in a step-by-step -step order in which they should occur. The book that we used last year for Hour of Code was The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And you can see me on our carpet. Um, I had taken pictures from The Very Hungry Caterpillar, all of the fruits that he had eaten, and placed them onto our carpet. And as I read the story, the students coded me through each of the events in the story. Um, we talked about before we started how um, each box on the carpet represented one move. So if I needed to move forward two spaces, they would have to be specific in sequencing to tell me to move two spaces. If they just said move forward as um, being in an actual code, I wouldn't know when to stop if they didn't tell me. So I would walk off of the carpet if they didn't tell me how many places to move. If I needed to turn left one time and they didn't say that, I would spin in a circle until they told me to stop. So they were getting the basic of making sure that you are blocking the code step by step through the book. The students actually all um, learned left and right. So we would hold our hands up and make the L shape with our left hand and right hand to talk about which way was left and which way was right because that was important and being able to give directions throughout the book. And this is actually a video of um, me walking through the lesson. So if you want to see that video, you can kind of go back and watch to see what they were doing um, through the lesson. I actually don't think this is too long. It's on YouTube. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. Laura? Go forward three times. One, two, three. So the student to give me step-by-step -step directions to code through the book. There are several books that work for that process. Sequencing through We're Going on a Bear Hunt, there's actually a, um, in a Google Drive that you will receive at the end of the presentation, there is actually a um, folder game for this. So we did go some old school on it some, and we used folder games before we actually began coding with CodeSpark and online, the students did a lot of unplugged coding so they could see it and process it out first before they were using it on a computer. And sequencing with the Little Red Fort, if you've not read this book, it's super cute, um, similar to the Little Red Hen, except it's a little bit girl power. She um, wants to build a fort and she has all brothers and every time she asks for help, they won't build her. So she builds herself a fort. Um, the game to the left, I created in 
Google Drawings with just a simple table and pictures. The arrows are movable, so students begin at the first of the book and move the arrows onto the grid in the order that the book would proceed. Um, the link in this is actually a forced copy, so if you click it, um, it will make a copy into your Google Drive that you're able to keep or share with your students. This is one of our students working through a sequencing game on CodeSpark. I believe this is a kindergartner. So it's to walk, jump, walk, jump. And they get very excited when she shakes her booty around. Of course, kindergartners and first graders always laugh. So all of CodeSparks games are wordless and they give very specific guided directions. The next type of um, um, coding sequence that we learn is stacks and cues. So a queue is a line um, of items, so it has to be stacked in a specific way. Um, it gets messages, jobs, it, they're all just waiting for something to happen so that they can be active. So you've probably heard the McDonald's Big Mac jingle, you could probably sing it in your head, and that's a stack. All of that was stacked on the Big Mac in a specific way. Um, so that is kind of how we introduce with stacks and cues in a song that we know goes a specific way or um, watching someone line up. There's a bunch of little cute videos on YouTube of stacks and cues. Then we use the, um, there wasn't a lady who swallowed a fly and it stacks of course in a specific manner. She swallows the fly, why'd she swallow the fly? So, um, it goes in the order and the students have to learn that it can't, the old lady is not going to swallow the goat first and um, after the fly she's going to go to the spider and then the bird because each one has a specific meaning. The cat has to chase or eat the bird, the bird has to eat the spider, the spider has to eat the fly and um, so it's stacked in a specific way. And The Little Old Lady Who Was Not Afraid of Anything is one of my favorite books I like this one to use because it gets students up and moving if you use the motions as she's walking through the book. There's actually a YouTube video of uh, The Little Old Lady. It's a song that goes with it and um, that students like to use. And she has to build her um, scarecrow in a specific manner. She wouldn't have started with the hat. She started with the shoes first and um, because they built it from the ground up. The, um, another book that we use is The Mitten, um, as each person is adding into The Mitten, they um, begin with the smallest one and it grows and grows as they are um, crawling into The Mitten. Um, the song on the Stacks and Cues for The Mitten song is actually free on Teachers Pay Teachers, um, and that's always a cute one, especially this time of year with our code coming up in the winter to read. I know many teachers read it in their classroom, so you could tie it in with classroom learning and bring it right into your library, or if you are in a classroom, using it there to introduce coding. So this is a student working through the stacks and cues game. So they have to stack the animals in a particular order on the game. If they don't get in the correct order, then all of the animals fall off of their pedestals and they have to be, um, have to start from the beginning. So it gets a little more complicated as the levels go up. I think this was an easy level that I did. So as each level progresses, it progresses, they get a little bit harder and harder. 
Um, this one is oftentimes um, a little bit difficult for students, but it's a great activity for problem solving because they have to count how many animals are on the pedestals and how many they need on each one. The conditionals may start scaring people from coding because a conditional is a statement or action that only occurs if something else has happened. It's an if statement. Um, this is something that I taught as a third grade teacher in our classrooms. Um, if this, then that um, sort of lesson. And we used a lot of the, if you give a mouse a cookie books, if you give a so if you give a mouse a cookie, he's gonna want some milk. That would be a conditional. It's an if-then statement. All of the Laura Numeroff books are great for that. If you give a pig a pancake, they all work perfectly for this. So it's great to do a lesson if you're beginning conditionals with this book, to do it as an I do, we do, you do type of lesson where you can read the book and model, students begin to help, and then they could do it on their own. Also, this is one of my very favorite books, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And the activity next to it is free on teachers, paid teachers. Um, conditionals can also be seen as a cause and effect. If this happens, then this will happen. So Alexander had a bad day. The only reason he had a bad day was because he woke up with gum in his hair. So if Alexander would not have woken up with gum in his hair, would he have had a better day? He had a bad day because the gum was in his hair for Alexander. And we're gonna skip that video and move on to events. Um, events are an action or cue that signals a new line of code to run. So for example, if you had a mouse click, if the mouse clicked, then something would happen. In order for me to open a website, I have to click the mouse. If I want an email to be deleted, I have to click the delete button. It doesn't do it by itself. Something has to happen in order for the code to run. So the events book that I use, a picture book to introduce this, is Please Mr. Panda. If you've ever read this book, he has donuts and he asks um, a bunch of his friends, Can, would you like a donut? And each of the friends say, give me the, and proceeds to tell him which one. So the penguin, give me the pink one. And he says, no, you can't have a donut. It's only until he hears a please does he give a donut to a friend. So that is the event that has to happen. You have to say please in order to get a donut. It's also great to work in with manners for um, kindergarten and first grade as well. Even preschool, that would be a good activity. Um, Rufus Goes to Sea is another great book to use for events. Uh, this was actually on our Arkansas Diamond reading list a couple of years ago. And um, the Rufus really wanted to be a pirate, and he tries all kinds of things to be a pirate. He um, has a bucket and a mop because the decks need swabbing. He decides he's going to peel potatoes, but they already have a deck swabbing pirate, and they already had a potato peeling pirate. He keeps trying so many different things until he opens up his book to begin reading. And the captain realizes that he could actually, the pirate he's looking for, is a map reading pirate. So you had to be able to read in order to become a pirate. So that is their if then. The event that happened is you had to read then you could be a pirate on the ship. Another um, activity that's on CodeSpark I did not introduce with a picture book is the variables and inequalities. Guys, this is a first grader. So they have to catch the coins in the bucket. So she's in first grade and her language was greater than 20. I love being able to include the language like that in our lessons so that um, students can hear that it's not only um, 
in class that they're using, in math class that they're using words like greater than, and they can also tie it into literacy, it's encoding. There are so many different ways that those um, adjectives, those verbs, those actions are used. We had a student um, that was building something in the library in one of our maker stations and his teacher walked in. It was a, a kindergartner, I believe, and he kept having a problem with his marble maze. It was not, um, the marble couldn't go all the way through and the teacher stopped and she asked him what was wrong. And he said, I have a problem in my algorithm. There's something that has not gone the right way. I'm trying to debug it right now. So he was actually just trying to figure out what blocks he needed to get his marble to go down, but he used that language. He was working on an algorithm, which is a set of steps in a process and he had a problem, so he was trying to debug his problem. CodeSpark also has debugging in their um, games and on their app, Boolean logic, loops, automation, and we saw just a clip of the variables and inequalities. Um, if you want to see the presentation and the videos that were in here, um, you can use the bit.ly link. It'll force a copy into your Google Drive, so it's not my copy. It will then become your copy. There is a Google folder with some coding lessons. There are actually just a few in there right now with some resources, but I am working on lesson plans for each of these books that you saw today. So those lesson plans will also be available in there as they are. Um, and I am very much a sharing teacher. If I create it, I want to share it for others to use as well. So they will be in there for free for you to use, for you to share. CodeSpark is a really awesome um, coding website. There's also the app um, that you can use on any devices, iPads or phones. I actually have it on my phone. I play it from time to time. And a padlet of books under each topic on the padlet are several books that can be used to introduce that coding lesson. And now I think Laura's going to help us out. And if anyone has any questions, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Laura, did we have any questions? Let's see. I did not see any questions in the chat. But if anyone does have a question, you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask or quickly type the question into the chat box. Especially if you have a specific question about how you can implement um, or where to get started with, with coding with picture books, um, you can feel free to ask. And I'm just screen sharing so you guys can't see me. I'm going to hop over to the other screen. Um, on CodeSpark's website, they actually have a shop um, with um, stickers that you can buy. Today I'm wearing my Naomi shirt. She's the ninja foo and she's my favorite. And they also have activity packs and kits that have some unplugged coding activities. Those are in their resources as well. So the shirt that I have on today, can you guys see the website, Laura? Yes, yes, we okay. can. Okay, so I have my Naomi shirt, the Ninja Fu, on there. She's one of my favorites. And of course, Glitch is always fun. Um, I believe that we are sold out of Glitch plushies right now, but if you watch Twitter with the hashtag, where in the world is Glitch, people who have Glitch are taking him on vacation and around and posting their pictures. Glitch is the problem that sometimes happens in our lines of coding. He's what we have to debug and get to um, get back fixing right. We also have the Astro Foo. Under the kids, there's also some kids clothes. So they have some really cute t-shirts for kids. Um, I love Sergio. He is um, one of the newer Foos. And the school supplies. I want to show my the posters, Laura. <laughs> yes, we've got some fun posters. I am so excited about these posters. So there's the how are you feeling today with all of the glitch emotions. I love that poster. Um, I think it would be great in a counselor's office, even maybe just behind my desk. I might need to choose a different um, glitch today. And then the characters poster that has all of the characters names under it. Those are a couple of the newer posters that came out. And I think there's a code, a coding, yeah. Um, what each of the different 
block codes mean. So the walk, code, run, jump, and what the loops would look like. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. It looks like we have a few questions trickling in. The first question is from Carrie Westerman, and she's asking, is code spark free? And the answer is yes. We are super excited to say um, and share that CodeSpark is and always will be free for teachers, um, public school teachers, librarians, and for nonprofit organizations. And that's um, for our mission to accessible computer science education for all students around the world. What I will note now, though, is that we are a subscription-based app for families who want to use us at home. So for um, parents who want to download the app for their child at home, for students to code and create and make games and stories at home, um, it's a subscription-based app. We also have a question in the chat asking if CodeSpark is Chromebook compatible. And the answer is yes. The entire CodeSpark Academy experience is now available on Chromebooks and all web browsers, including Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. We're especially excited about this announcement because it opens the doors to coding for so many more kids. You can access the web version of CodeSpark on codespark.com play. Um, and I just, Laura, logged into my um, teacher dashboard. Can you guys see where um, I am now? Yes, yes, you can. Okay, so under your teacher dashboard, what's great is they have lessons and resources already available. There is a professional development package as well um, that is amazing if you are looking to gain some more information about coding. I have a couple of demo classes that I set up in, we'll look at ISTE. Um, and students, when you have, I don't have anybody in ISTE, so sad. Um, when you add students to the classroom, you're able to actually see their progress and see where they have um, the lessons that they have made it to, how far they've progressed. You can even turn on and off different activities in the game if you don't want them to access that. So if you want to begin with sequencing and that's the only thing available, you can turn only that one on and then build to loops, advanced sequencing, and so on so that students can progress um, in a logical order and that you can manage those as well. Awesome, thank you so much. We have another question in the chat asking, how long did the lesson with Hungry um, Caterpillar take? Or how long do you have for class? typically? Um, we had 40 minutes for, um, typically had 40 minutes for classes. Our schedule was a little different last year. Um, the way that our schedule ended up with some of the classes is that we had them a total of an hour, so they would spend about 30 minutes in the library and 30 minutes in the computer lab. But on an average day prior to that, schedule change, we would have students for about 40 minutes. So the unplugged, a very hungry caterpillar would take less than 30 minutes and um, students checked their books in as they came in. So that did take up a little bit of time. Um, and then of course we introduced, took a few minutes to talk about left and right um, and then explain the directions, which our students had coded a little bit before the class you saw was a third grade class. So they had done a couple of unplugged activities before and knew the basis for coding. We use that as a review last year, um, but kindergarten even did that lesson last year. Um, we had to help, of course, with the left and right. A lot of times they would just point which direction I would need to go, but it took um, less than 30 minutes. The full lesson, um, I actually recorded an entire class doing that is on that YouTube video. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ashley. So to follow up with that, all of the lessons that are available on CodeSpark's teacher dashboard are less than 30 minutes long. And that's because we recognize that um, elementary teachers have a lot on their plates and you have very limited time, if and any at all, in order to implement coding. So we tried our best to keep the lessons short and sweet. Um, there are also tons of unplugged activities and worksheets that you can find as well. So if you only have um, 15 minutes to spare, you can kind of um, slide in some of those quick activities. 
I also see another question asking, where will we find the links and will there be an email with this presentation? Absolutely. So um, shortly following um, the end of this webinar, we'll do a quick edit of the video and I'll be emailing and sharing it out with all of the um, lovely folks who have registered for this webinar. So you will be getting an email in the next day or two. Another question that I see is, is there a limit to classes that I can set up? I have 600 students. That's a great question. And the answer is no, there is no limit. So you can have up to 600 students, up to 1,000 students, as many students as you'd like. So if you go into the teacher dashboard and sign up, um, as you saw Ashley sign in, you can um, go to view your classrooms. You can create as many classrooms as you'd like. And then within those classrooms, add as many of your students as you'd like. Um, and as Ashley mentioned, there's a way for you to track all of your students' progress so you can quickly at a glance see how your students are doing. Um, and it also is um, clever friendly, correct, Laura? Yes, it is Clever compatible. So if you are a school district that uses the Clever app, then um, you don't have to download CodeSpark separately. You can go right into Clever and use the same login to access the dashboard as well as the app itself. Thank you everyone for your wonderful questions. If you have any additional questions, you can email Ashley or you can um, send me an email at laura at codespark.com. Thank you so much, Ashley, and thank you everyone for uh, jumping in and participating. Thank you guys, it was so much fun. I look forward to seeing you. Um, the next, I believe CodeSpark will be at ISTE this summer and um, a couple of other conferences. So if you are registered for those conferences, be sure to hit the exhibitor area and find their booth. They always have such a fun time. Um, I believe they had a, a wheel of prizes at ISTE last year and the line was so long. <laughs> we had some great giveaways though. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us today. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.